Access to diabetes technology is expanding. This includes the use of continuous glucose monitors or CGMs. CGMs can help people significantly improve their glycemic control and reduce episodes of hypoglycemia by automatically tracking and reporting glucose levels. Most patients will liaise with a diabetes specialist team to access and manage these devices. However, we in primary care are going to see more and more people with CGMs. So how do they work? And how can we support patients to get the best out of them? My name is Malcolm. I'm a diabetes specialist nurse, and I also use a CGM to help me manage my type 1 diabetes. CGMs are small devices which sit on the patient's body and transmit blood sugar readings at regular intervals to a receiver. This reader is usually a patient's smartphone, but users can also have a separate device. CGMs measure glucose levels in the interstitial fluid as a proxy for blood glucose levels. A small electrode sensor sits in the skin and generates an electric current proportionate to the glucose concentration. A transmitter attached to the sensor sends this data to a reader or smartphone. You can reassure patients that they are not painful to wear and at worst application feels like a pinprick, similar to injecting insulin. Different CGMs vary in terms of where they can be worn. You'll need to check by each model. I tend to wear mine in the back of the arm, but other sites commonly indicated are the abdomen, upper buttocks or upper thighs. Each CGM comes with a disposable application device, which uses a retractable needle to insert the wire underneath the skin. Patients with impaired dexterity may find these tricky to use. The sensor is held to the skin with adhesive. Some of the older models need calibration. To do this, patients will finger prick once or twice a day and enter this data into the reader. To remove the CGM, you simply peel the device off the skin. CGMs need to be changed every 10 to 14 days, depending on models. Some have a separate removal transmitter device, which can be used for up to three months at a time. The CGM software collects a variety of data, including time and range, predicted HbA1c, number of scans per day, number of hypos, and daily patterns. Patients need to wear sensors continuously for this to be accurate. Data is displayed either on a smartphone app or a separate reader. You may be able to access this data directly yourself via your practice. Otherwise, it's a case of asking the patient to show you their app or reader. This data can be used to create and monitor individualized targets, such as for time and range. It can also help tailor management to a patient's blood glucose patterns. This graph shows a summary of a patient's glucose values over two weeks, with the median and other percentiles shown as if occurring in a single day. In this example, we can see there is significant glycemic variation which might be missed if the patient was spot-checking their blood glucose through finger pricking. There are peaks in blood glucose after meals, so increasing preprandial insulin would reduce these. These postprandial peaks are being compensated for by basal insulin, so you would also need to reduce basal insulin to prevent hypos. These changes would be one step towards increasing this patient's time in range. You can set up optional alarms on CGMs and these can be very useful. For example, I've set mine so that if my sugar level falls below 4.5, it will prompt me that I'm potentially at risk of having a hypo. This can be a very good option for patients who do have impaired hyper awareness. Equally, you can set a high glucose alarm so that if the sugar level goes above it, it might prompt patients to take an insulin correction dose. CGMs can interact with insulin pumps to form a hybrid closed loop system. This automatically adjusts their basal insulin to prevent high sugar levels and will suspend insulin in the event of low sugar levels. Patients will still need to administer a manual bolus at mealtimes. Compared to finger pricking, CGMs have several advantages. Once set up, they make checking your sugar levels quick and easy.
They give insights into my blood sugar levels through the day and through the night. Patients with needle phobia may prefer to use a CGM device. And data from the CGM can be shared with friends and family, which can help keep people safer. For example, notifying a partner if someone's having a hypo. One disadvantage of CGMs is that there is a lag between the blood glucose level and the interstitial fluid level that's measured by the device's sensor. CGM measurements are also less accurate than traditional capillary blood glucose monitoring methods, particularly at low ranges. Finger pricking is still needed to validate readings, particularly those that indicate hypoglycemia or are very high. And devices do occasionally fail. It's important patients have backup test strips and a glucometer for these occasions too. There are barriers to CDM use. Patients will need to have sufficient manual dexterity in order to use the applicator devices. And most CGMs are geared towards smartphone use, although there are reader devices available. Some patients may not want to wear a CGM device and will have issues around CGM and body image. Some patients may find the sheer amount of data that CGMs provide to be overwhelming and this can lead to anxiety around blood sugar levels. In primary care, it's important that we recognise when patients are eligible for CGMs, refer accordingly and discuss questions or concerns they may have. We can encourage patients to set appropriate alarms and use the devices correctly to ensure accurate data. But finally, we can ensure patients have adequate sensors and backup testing strips and a glucometer. In my personal and professional experience, the benefits of CGMs far outweigh the drawbacks or technical limitations. Patients often report to me that they are life-changing in terms of the insights and control that gives them over their diabetes and they often help patients become far more engaged with managing it on a daily basis. They also give a lot of reassurance to friends and families around hypoglycemia. Very few of my patients ever go back to finger prick monitoring full time.